So in this video, we're going to talk about the five belief shifts that I made in my life over the last few years that helped me succeed. Now, if this is your very first time to the channel, please consider subscribing and also drop your comments below in the chat. Let us know what really more you'd like to see from this channel. So if you're going to see me looking over there, that's because I have some notes on the five things and I just wanted to make sure that I stay focused. So you see, one of the very first things that you have to do in order for you to succeed in life and success could mean a little differently for different people. For you, um, it could mean, you know, making more money for other people. It could mean uh, better relationships uh, for others. It could be better health, whatever success means for you. Um, you need to make a shift in your mindset first before you could actually um, achieve that success, right? Something has to change. And if you are expecting to do exactly the same thing as you did yesterday, but achieve a different result, that's just not going to work. So things truly have to change. And then it just kind of depends on how big is the gap between where you are and what your desired situation is. Um, that big of a change needs to happen, right? So the very first thing for me personally, um, was that, and this was, this is a big one. Um, hope you guys could see that. All right. Uh, this is a big one for a lot of people. And I'll explain here what I mean. And that is less is more. And I'll explain what I mean. So I want to make sure you guys could see it. Sorry about the glare from the window behind me. Um, but less is more. You see, I've talked about this in many of my videos and we are programmed, society has programmed us that say if we are, if you want to accomplish, if more success to us means more money, right? And society has, has programmed us that in order for you to become a millionaire, um, you need multiple streams of income, right? And what I noticed that when I was trying to do multiple things, I was just my focus was, you know, when, the, when they say you half-ass everything because you spread too thin. So this is a terminology or this is a drawing that my mentor um, showed me, which it, it simply just shifted my mindset about this, this topic here. And he said, you've got two, two, um, two sources of power. So imagine this is power, right? So this is power, this is power. Now this one thing, this one power source, and then they both have, you know, same amount, same amount of everything. This one power source has only one, um, one thing it needs to power. This other power source has six different things it needs to power. So this power source says this goes six. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, right? It's powering six things. Now, because this is only powering one, one channel, it can go one, two, three, four, five, six times further, right? And this is the cool thing about having, focusing on one thing and keeping things very simple because less is always more. The less thing you do, the more you accomplish. Does that make sense? So when this, when I, made when I became, you know, um, when I realized this thing, everything changed for me because I was pressured, you know, and that's the other thing is that we feel pressured that in order for us to accomplish more, we need to add all those extra things to our lives. We need to, you know, uh, um, I need to get into this business and that business and this other business. But one thing that is beautiful about when you keep things simple and you stick to one thing, it's just so much less pressure on you personally, and it's just so much easier to accomplish more things and stay focused. And trust me, mastery does not happen unless you do the same thing over and over and over again, right? So I could talk about this topic for, for hours. And in fact, I've probably, I probably covered it at some point in almost all of my videos and all of my content, just simply because less is more, right? So that's the very first thing. Now the second thing, let me see if I should go down here, just delete this. So number two, you guys see that? All right. Uh, so number two is, um, 
I don't need money. I don't need money. That's it. Instead, I need knowledge. I hope I spell this correctly. Yeah, see it? Yep. So I don't need money, I need knowledge. And here's what I mean by that. Um, in 2011, 2012, um, well, let, let me kind of take, take a step back a little bit. Um, growing up in the 70s and the 80s, my dad was very well off. He had, um, he was a, he was a very hardworking man. And then he, you know, he found a, Ever since he was a little kid, he used to sew, sew, sew. I think that's what it is, sew, sew, like sewing clothes, right? I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, ever since he was a little kid. And then he became an accountant. And then a friend of his came up to him, and I think went, my dad was like 30s or whatever, and said, hey man, there is this factory of clothing. I know you've got um, experience and background of clothing. There is this factory where there are like 12 or 14 partners and they're just drawing, driving the business to the ground. I, am, I have a, a percentage in that factory. I would love for you to come and somehow try to help them out. Within six or eight months, my dad was able to buy everybody out and the guy that you know, brought him in. Um, and then in about six months after that, he was able to increase the production of that factory by 600%, right? So he was a very smart guy. And so that was like 79, 80. And then so the entire 80s and in early 90s, he was very well off. I mean, he was making millions of dollars every single year. But right mid 90s, as I, I was born in 1990, as I was growing up, you know, so my siblings had an amazing life because their father was rich. He used to always travel to Europe and all kinds of places and, and bring them all these toys and all that stuff. So they all had a great time. However, when I was born, right when I was born, there was the Gulf War in Iraq and then there was another war, and then the 2003, the big war happened in Iraq. And so I didn't really see much. And then my dad's business started just kind of declining. And then at 2003, uh, when we had to flee Iraq, we simply left everything behind. We had property in Iraq and everything. He left everything behind, and we left and came to America uh, with nothing, with literally zero. I was 16 years old. Up until, until that point, I had really not seen, like not, you know, I guess, enjoyed any of his wealth. You know what I mean? Um, so my dad kind of almost always felt obligated that he needed to provide to me the kind of life that my siblings had. So right around, uh, I think it was like 2000 or something like that, 2010, 2009, he was able to, you know, claim back some of his property and then sell some of them. And then he wired $200,000 into my account in 2012. And he said, look, your mom wants you to become a doctor. Either go do that if you want to or go start a business. I had just, you know, I had been going to college for a couple of months and I just, it wasn't my thing, right? So I said, you know what? I'm gonna start my own business. The previous year, me and my brother had started a pizzeria restaurant. I had been working there for about a year and a half. You know, um, it was very successful. You know, we were doing very well. So I said, I said, you know what? I could probably do this on my own. And I went out and branched out, took my dad's money and then started a restaurant on my own. Three years later, the restaurant burned down. I had no insurance, lost half a million dollars in the process, came out of it with $150,000 in debt. Why? Because I had money going in. I had $200,000 and my dad invested another $150,000 over the next three years to help me out in my business. But it wasn't my dad's money that I needed. I needed his knowledge. I needed his wisdom. I needed a mentor. I needed someone to show me. I had a huge ego. I needed someone to say, kid, you're 22 years old, you're 23 years old, you're a dumb kid, you don't know anything, here is how it needs to be done. I needed to learn discipline, I needed to learn some core values that I can implement in my business. I needed to be, you know, again, to be disciplined, I needed to know how to treat my employees right, I needed to, you know, know how to treat my customers right. I needed all that knowledge that if I had, I would have figured out the money part. Do you know why? Because I later did. Because I later got the knowledge and had zero money. In fact, I was $150,000 in debt, but figured out the money by borrowing money. And that's the thing. <clears throat> the solution, you know, if you're like, but if I have the knowledge and I don't have the money, well, how good is the knowledge? Well, money equals OPM. 
other, other people's money. How do you think big, huge companies become? How do you think all these massive places become? They become because they use other people's money, because they're able to go out there and then simply draw from other people and then get other people's money to start their own businesses. So I borrowed $5,000 from my uh, girlfriend's mom, right? And my girlfriend at the time is now my wife. When I bought my first Amazon course, I put it on my girlfriend's credit card. I called her and said, hey, what's your card number? I used other people's money. And then I went on to borrow you know, a few thousand dollars from friends and this person and that person until my business started growing and it started becoming something, right? So you don't need money, you need knowledge. Now look, if you're enjoying the content so far, we got three things. I know we've been together for 10 minutes already. I'm gonna make it a little quicker. Uh, probably spend the next five minutes going through the next five things. But if you're enjoying this content so far, smash the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel because every single week we drop content just like this on this channel. So, and by the way, the thumbs up really helps out with the algorithm. Um, let me see if you guys could see this. And sorry again for the glare that's going on right here. Um, all right, so the third thing is, let's see. I can learn from anyone, but only learn from one person. Okay, so uh, focus. Well, sorry, what is that? Well, so focus. And this is follow one course until successful. And by the way, sorry about my crazy handwriting. So focus, which stands for follow one course until successful, right? Um, there is a ton of content out there on YouTube. And, and, and you know, we are, we live in a beautiful uh, uh, era right now because any content you want, anything you want is readily available. You can watch videos like this. You can go on Instagram, you can go anywhere. You can go to literally, you know, you can enroll in BJK University and learn how to sell on Amazon and, and have your first, you know, make your first uh, sale in, in less than 90 days. Um, but when um, the problem is that I've, see, that I've seen many times and that I actually personally had was that I was listening to too many places. I was listening to too many people, too many. I had too much um, uh, inflow of information and too much inflow of information could actually be worse than no inflow of information because now you're aware and it's like something happens when your eyes open up and then you realize that there's this whole new world out there. I just want to know so much about it. You want to know everything about it. So you got go out there and start consuming all this content. And that's great. However, the problem is that, say, you know, you're wanting to learn how to sell on Amazon. You're, you're listening to me and like three other people, right? Not saying that my strategies are better than theirs or theirs are better than mine, but I probably teach a different way than every single one of them. And now all four of us are feeding you four different strategies. And for you, it just doesn't sit right because product research, do I follow this criteria, this criteria, this criteria, this criteria? Product launch, do I follow this, 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 and that? Well, product launch only works if you follow this criteria, but if you follow my criteria and in someone else's product launch, it probably won't work and then it'll fail. So that's why figuring first knowledge, you need knowledge, you don't need money, right? But then number three is follow one course until successful. And when I say one course, and I'm not talking about like just buy a course, I'm just talking about anything. So with that, if you wanna study somebody, right? Um, like someone like Warren Buffett, someone like Thomas Edison, someone like, Elon Musk, you know, don't study five different people at the same time. Go to one person, read all of their books, all of their autobiographies, watch their interviews, all that stuff. Learn everything you can deep down. Go deep into one person before you can go into the other people because that way you are not getting contradicting information. And for me, for the last three years, I've been learning from the same one person and I've just simply not allowed myself to learn from any other people or have any other people influence my decision making, okay? Number four is um, I can't do it alone. So number four, that's it. Number four, I can not do it alone. This is huge. This is huge. You cannot do it alone, right? You need the right people in your business, in your life, um, for me, uh, 
the last five years of my life would have been a million times more difficult and would have been probably not possible. Where I am today probably would not have been possible should I, had I not had my wife by my side, right? And although she's not involved in my business or anything, um, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't have a role in the business or any of that, but just having someone there, knowing that there is somebody there that believes in me more than I believe in myself, knowing that there is somebody there that's going to push me, knowing that there is somebody there that's going to just have a shoulder that I can put my head on and cry if I needed to, right? Just knowing that someone truly gives a shit about me and doesn't care about, it's not materialistic, it's not there for the money, it's not there for because they want something from me, which is why they're there. They're just there, you know, it's unconditional. It's unconditional love, it's unconditional care. They're just there, right? And then after when I was building the business and growing the business, a solid team. We have some amazing fucking team members in our, uh, in our company, and the company would not have been a fraction of what it is today if it wasn't for, for our team. If anything, I owe everything to them because literally, I would not have been, I scaled the business to a certain point. I was working 10 times more than ever and, you know, half-assing everything, but it was because the team was there. You know, it's, you always need to hire and, and bring on and recruit people that are smarter than you, where you can literally give them one part of the business and just tell them to run with it. But in order for them to be as dedicated as you are, they need to be to feel like partners. They need to be treated like partners. They need to be compensated like partners. They need to have an upside in your business as much as you do, right? They can't be making $5,000 a month when you're making $100,000 a month and then making $5,000 a month when you're making a million dollars a month. That just doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense? So that is huge. And trust me, you cannot accomplish anything great alone. You need to have a team. Again, if this is your first time or if you're returning and have not subscribed, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that thumbs up button. So we got one more thing. I know we've been together for 17 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make it quick. Um, it has to be about something more than the money. Let me see where am I gonna write that thing right here, number five. So number five, it has to have a meaning. meaning. I think, I think that's how I spelled it. It has to have a meaning, right? And what I mean by that is, um, so obviously starting out, you know, and maybe some of, many of you guys that are watching today, you know, you're either in debt, you're a student, you got a business and it's not doing well, um, or maybe you're doing okay in life and you just don't want to, you know, want to make better, uh, want to do better. Uh, many of you guys watching this channel right now or this video probably don't make $10,000 maybe make anywhere between two to $5,000. And maybe even if you're making $10,000. And you know, $10,000 is great money. It's, it's um, I think it puts you, um, you know, it puts you in, well, it doesn't put you in that 1%. I think about 40 or $50,000 a month is when you actually become part of the 1%. It depends on where you live in the world and in the country and all that. But you're getting up there, you know. I think 70% uh, of the population around the world makes less than a half of what you make. At ten thousand dollars, so a lot of people strive for that ten thousand dollars, but then about sixty or seventy thousand dollars per year in earnings, you satisfy all of your basic needs. You know, and I'm not talking about just food and water and, and shelter, but I'm talking about insurance and a nice car and a nice home and all that. So when you're making ten thousand dollars a month, that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. That's almost double. Well, that is double of what you would need to meet your basic needs. Right? Because your basic needs are about sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year. Now you're making one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So obviously you can go and buy a more expensive car, a more expensive watch, go on vacation twice a year instead of once a year, and do all that and blow your money. Right? But then how many years can you really do it? Two, three, five, ten years? You're going to get bored of it, right? And even the ten thousand. If you're making ten thousand and you feel like that's a lot of money, start hanging out with people that are making a hundred thousand, and then you'll feel this big. And I start hanging out with people that are making a million dollars per month, and you'll feel like this big. And I start hanging out with people that are making $10 million a month, and then you won't even want to step in the room, right? So there's always that potential. But what is going to be driving you? Because right now, maybe it's because you want to get out of debt. Maybe because you want to spend time with your family. Maybe because, you know, you want to make your parents proud, right? Which is, which is the driver today. 
But then once you get to that $10,000 a month, you know, that driver isn't going to be there. So what is going to drive you to go even further? Why are there and how are there people that produce a million dollars a month, produce $10 million a month, produce $100 million a month? How is that even humanly possible? Because there is something that is bigger than the money that's driving them. It's not the money alone that's driving them anymore, right? And that, you know, and this, there's a reason why I left it last, because for you, maybe this doesn't make sense right now and won't make sense. But as you start creeping up to that $10,000 a month, you should definitely start thinking about this and say, what kind of a meaning can I attach to the money, right? That will allow me to keep driving forward. What will that meaning be? Does that make sense? So that's something that you have to start thinking about once you start getting to that $10,000 a month. So that way you can keep going because if you're not growing, you're dying. And if you just stick at 10,000, two, three, four, five, 12 months, trust me, you will start falling if you don't improve beyond the 10,000. Because again, if you're not growing, you're dying. Hope you guys found this video valuable. If you did, please smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Also drop in the comments below what was one of those? Which one of these was the most valuable for you? Number two, number five, number six. And maybe tell us a short story about that in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.